Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. My name is Maddie Vincent, and this is my friend and co-host, Nicole Moses. How are you today, Nicole? Hey, Maddie. I'm good. It's so great to see you. It's so great to see you, our morning show friend. Guys, we made it to February. How crazy is that? It's already How is it already February? February, I don't February 2022. <laughs> What the heck? That's wild. Well, we have had a little bit of fun here in Charlotte. In January, we got some snow, which we don't usually get. So that was a very fun, fun little treat for us here. Yes. And you guys, Nicole and her husband do not play (laughs) when it comes to snow. They were outside, I think, from the moment they woke up until the moment they went to bed. And it was maybe like this is three true. centimeters of snow. It was yeah. not. <laughs> it was like freezing rain, not quite snow. And and we were out there because I have a big snow dog and a husband who loves it. So, you know, it wasn't my choice, but <laughs> but here we are. But I know, Maddie, I know you are more of a summer girl. So how did you do in the snow? I love the summer. I love the <laughs> spring. I love when things are green. I love flowers so the winter the winter (laughs) is hard um but you know what today it's a nice balmy like 40 50 degrees outside Mm -hmm. um I'm wearing my valentine's day red shirt and I have hope that we're gonna have an early spring so um that's what I am optimistic about today on the morning show but I think something that would be fun to get to know each other a little bit is if you will send us a comment using emojis to tell us what the weather is like where you are and how you feel about it oh that's fun um so for me I would maybe do like a little um sunshine because it is sunny here and um maybe like a gust of wind because it's just a little bit too cold to not have a jacket and um then maybe like a hopeful face I don't know what the hopeful emoji would be (laughs) I would I would do that one because I feel hopeful that winter is almost over oh that's funny that's good I think maybe yeah like you said it's not quite can't just go with the sun emoji because I feel like that would be misleading and you would think it's warm Mm -hmm. so maybe like the cloud with the sun um and then I think I would use a happy face because I didn't have to wear my big coat this morning. This is all, this is all I wore to work today. And I felt great. And gosh, there's just something about not having to lug your big coat around and it felt great. So I'm happy. I am happy today. All right. Well, what kind of emojis do you see coming through in the comments? We have Victoria, a little cloud and is that I can't tell if it's snowing or raining but she's a crying face I'm oh sorry. no <laughs> oh someone else cloud with the sun Laura and a little the little happy emoji I love it these are fun these are so fun oh, you guys I hope you're staying warm out there as we finish up winter yes yes all of you in those cold states Please stay warm if you are sad that it's still cold or rainy or snowing. We are sending you all the love and the spring vibes all towards you. (laughs) But, you know, speaking of weather, not too long ago on a previous morning show, we were talking about how just like the seasons that we go through every each and every year we also have those seasons in our lives and one season that can be particularly hard to walk through is when we go through times where we're almost forced to trust God um, where we have no other choice have you ever had a season like that Maddie I mean part of me wants to answer and say isn't every season like that where we have to we're forced to trust God Um, but I also can think back through really specific times in my life where it just all felt so uncertain and maybe a little chaotic and discouraging 
and I didn't know what God was doing or how he was working, Mm -hmm. but my only option was to trust God and trust that he had a plan. Mm -hmm. So I think, yes, I have definitely been (laughs) through that season before. What about you? Yeah, absolutely. I think like you said, there's in every season, I feel like we're faced with that, but I can think of some distinctive moments in my life. Um, One that stands out to me is um, a time where I had a family member who was really struggling with their mental health and their physical health. And it was a moment of complete uncertainty. And um, I, it was all completely out of my control, out of my hands. And it was really scary, you know, to have to completely surrender to God and just trust that he has a plan and that he will be faithful to me. Um, but that is really hard and that is a really hard place to be. And so we know that many of you have had to trust God in really hard seasons as well. And so today we just wanted to take some time, spend some time with you and share just a few ways that might help us all increase our faith while also decreasing our doubt. Mm. Yeah, I think one question that we find ourselves asking a lot in seasons of struggle is how do I rebuild trust with God right now? And where where do I even begin? So our answer to this is that the best place that we can always begin is in his word. You guys, the Bible is full of so many stories um, that testify to God's character. And it shows you again and again that he is a trustworthy God. We see it in the promises that he made to Abraham and Moses and David. Um, And not only did he make promises to them, but he kept them. Um, We see his faithfulness in the way that he provided for the Israelites in the wilderness. And there's this huge promise that he kept that outshines every other example that we could show you in scripture is that he was faithful to the promise that he made to Adam and Eve by crushing the head of the serpent as he sent his son down to earth to die a death that we should have died. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's so good. Um, I love everything that you said, Maddie. I think sometimes just looking back and reminding ourselves how faithful God has been in the past is the exact encouragement that we need in the moments that we're in right now. Uh, in fact, in Psalm 111:7, it says the works of his hands are faithful and just all his, all his precepts are trustworthy. In that one sentence, we read that all of God's works are faithful and filled with justice, and that's why we can trust him. The answer to how can we rebuild our trust in God really is as simple as we look to his word for the truth of his faithfulness. When we remember his faithfulness, we come to believe that because God is faithful, he can be trusted. That is so good. And something um, a friend has told me lots time and time again is that if God didn't keep his promises, Hmm. he couldn't be God. And so he has to keep his promises. And so we can take so much security and faith in that. Um, I know that's something that another way that this can play out is... um, when we ever have, if you've ever had like a concern and it turned in from a concern to maybe a worry to just an all out fear. I think there's so many times that we have these legitimate concerns um, that aren't bad to have. I think it's okay for us to be concerned about things, but if we're not careful, um, it will start feeding our doubts. And before we even know it, we're attempting to control things out of our fear to keep it under control, right? Um, And this is when we have to stop ourselves and we have to pause and we have to stop ourselves and pause and respond 
to our fear based on what God's word says about fear. And what does God's word say about fear, Nicole? Well, it says plenty about fear, but I have a couple of verses that I want to read to you guys. Um, one is from Isaiah 41, 10, and it says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Another verse says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace, just listen to that. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's from Philippians four, it's verse six and seven. Here's the truth that when we try to take control we are ultimately leaving no room for God to be God. And friend, we make such a dumb God for ourselves. We want God to be God. We want him to be the center of the throne because he is so much better at being God than we are at being God. So I don't know what the worst case scenario that you are facing today that's trying to steal your peace, but I do know this, that God is in total control and he holds your very life. He holds your very life in his hands. Mm, that's so good. That is such an encouragement. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I want to acknowledge for everyone who is facing some really big fears right now, um, that that can be really hard. And I just feel like if we were all sitting together having coffee, we would all just be nodding our heads in agreement that yes, it is so hard to look around the world and see all the things happening to look around just our lives um, and not feel fear grip our hearts. We all battle fear at some point in our lives. We really just want that safety and certainty and simplicity as we raise our families and serve God and live out our faith. But there are so many things that feel threatening to that. Seeking the Lord might not always come naturally as our first response, but we do know that it's the only way to give us that supernatural strength we need. The more we turn to the Lord in our daily struggles and our every single day, the more natural it's going to be to return to him in times of unexpected trouble. The truth mm -hmm. is, while we can sometimes feel afraid, we don't have to live afraid. We can declare the same truth stated in 2 Chronicles 20, 12b. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I really love that verse, Nicole. And I think it's so helpful, just especially as we continue to walk through the inevitable hard things that we're going to face in life. Um, there are just so many circumstances that we are confronted with daily that we have to trust the Lord in. Um, and we can keep our eyes on him. Like we can do that. We can trust him. Um, okay, friend, I don't want to leave you with just these thoughts that Nicole and I just kind of just talked through. I really want to give you a resource that you can take and ponder and think through and pray about what we just said. So we're going to link in the comments a 10-day devotional by Lisa Turkhurst. It's called 10 Compassionate Devotions that will increase your faith while decreasing your doubts. It's totally free. It's just a gift from us to you on our website. Um, and it's just going to help you kind of go deeper in this conversation and really think through how you can apply these things to your life. Um, we're going to put the link in the comments. I know it will be so helpful for you. Uh, Lisa's words have just encouraged me in so many ways. So I'm excited to get your hands on that. Yes. It's so important these days in a world that is yelling so many messages at us all the time that as we feel anxiety rise in us, that we keep our eyes and our hearts focused on who God is and that he will never, ever, ever stop being faithful. Mm -hmm. So if your heart is troubled today, I would love to just pray over us as you go forward in your day with a new renewed trust in our good God. So let's mm -hmm. pray. Lord, um, I just thank you for being such a good father, God. I thank you for um, your faithfulness that never ends, Lord, that 
I thank you that your promises never um, go broken, Lord, that you will never break a promise. God, I just pray for every single girl watching this who has fear gripping her heart. Lord, I pray that you would just break through all of that fear that these truths would wash over her. Um, and that even though it may be a situation where she has no control, that um, there's nothing that we can do in that moment, um, that we can keep our eyes on you, Lord, and that that is enough, that we can trust that you will bring us through whatever it is we're facing, um, that you have only good in mind for us. And so, God, I just thank you for who you are. Um, I pray just for every single woman watching right now, Lord, that you, um, that your presence would be so evident to her um, in whatever she is facing. So, Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer, Nicole. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us on today's show. We hope that you leave more encouraged and um, have a little bit more understanding on God's character and his faithfulness than when you started. Just remember that whatever you're facing today, greater is he. Um, we will be back in two weeks. We meet here every other Thursday at 11 a.m. And this next time we're going to be talking about practical prayers to pray when the world feels dark. So I hope you will join us. It'll be such a good episode and we will see you then. Bye friends. Bye.